Welcome to this edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In today's video, we will take a quick look at the 2015 model PowerTig 255 EXT's welding capabilities. This is the final installment for the PowerTig 255 EXT, and we want to give you as much welding footage as you can stand. So get ready for less commentary and a little more action. Today we'll cover TIG welding plate steel by running a root pass in DC and we'll mix it up a little bit by adding in pulse just so you can get a feel for what it does. We'll also TIG weld aluminum and run some test beads on some of the dirtiest aluminum we could find and experiment with the impact of waveform control and advanced AC pulse. We'll also do some stick welding as well. Let's get started by welding a root pass in 3 8 inch plate material. This is short 4 inch plate, but we'll start just by running a root pass. We'll be using 90 amps and a foot pedal in standard DC without pulse. We're also using a 1 16th inch tungsten and filler rod. Now we could have used more amps here, but the effort will be rewarded. Did we mention that we're doing this with 120 volts? Well we are. That's why we're staying around 90 amps. We could go on up to 150 amps, but we're working with a 20 amp breaker. We're not pushing the breaker yet, but we wanted to stay on the safe side just so we could have a continuous run. That wasn't a bad time considering the last time I ran a plate like this was a while back and I was going into it cold. The flip side tells the tale. You're seeing it just like I did. Good penetration. Could be a little neater on the back side but all things considered it did well. What you could see in the welding part was the steady stable arc and that's the important thing. Now we're getting ready to make a hot pass. This time we'll bump the welder up to 150 amps and set the pulse for 50% pulse amps and 50% balance. We'll use one pulse per second for the half the weld. Then we'll bump it up to 500 hertz just so you can see and hear the difference in how it welds. Before I jump straight to welding with 500 hertz, I wanted to weld briefly with 150 hertz. That's a good in-between spot that feels really nice. Now we're bumping it up to 500 hertz. The whole technique changes and the puddle becomes a little thicker. But we're running out of adjustment as we are running on 120 volts. The breaker is still hanging in there.
Here's the final view of the steel. You can see where the color changes are where I made frequency changes in the pulse. Keep in mind all the other parameters stayed the same. Since I had plenty of room left to fill up this plate, I decided to try out a little 6010. This is an educated guess at settings because this was the first time out. This is about 65 amps with 70% arc force with a 332nd rod. We also used about 50% hot start and about a half a second hot start time. It didn't take me long to figure out that about a quarter to a third of a second for hot start was long enough. and the results. It's pretty easy to dial in the unit as later practice with the unit reveal. The unit seems to prefer Lincoln's versions of the 6010 rods. Now for the easy part, a nice cap pass with 7018. These weren't in a hot box, just so you know. Notice something wrong? Well I did too, about this time it struck me I was still welding at 67 amps with a 1 8 inch 7018. Oh well, let's see what 120 amps feels like. Let's grind that back out. Let's try that again. At this point, we did opt for 150 amps, and we did need to go to 240 volts to achieve this. Once again, the result. Now I've picked up a piece of dingy looking aluminum that's heavily oxidized and dirty. By all rights, this should be cleaned up before it's welded with, but to show the cleaning effect and highlight the differences in what I'm about to do, I will leave it as it is. Now I will weld a few short beads. Each will be a different waveform. I will start closest to the camera and stack the beads back toward me. This is the advanced square wave. For a fair evaluation, all sample welds are made using 110 Hz, 150 amps, and 35% cleaning action with the foot pedal. Now we're using the soft square wave. Now we're using the triangular waveform. Final waveform test is the sine wave. And here are the results. Keep in mind that all the welds were made with the same parameters. On the bottom is the advanced square wave, which seemed a little hot for the setting. Now just above that is the soft square wave, which wet out well, and it did not over penetrate for the setting. And third from the bottom is the triangular waveform. 
You may not be able to tell it, but the bead profile is a good bit different and it's a lot more stacked on top. And on the very top is the sine wave. I intentionally left a crater so that you could see what kind of effect the waveform had on the metal. These welds are far from perfect, especially with the dirty metal I used, but it illustrates the strengths and weaknesses of each waveform. Also take note of the cleaning action or lack thereof. Now we are welding with the advanced AC pulse. We are varying the pulse amps and keeping it at 1 hertz. Pulse sounds different. Over the next few welds, we will first start with the DC part of the cycle at a low percentage, around 25%. Then we will begin to raise the pulse amps. The theory is when DC current is at a low setting, the puddle will freeze fast. At a higher setting, the penetration will be greater than standard AC alone and we'll be using 150 amps as the benchmark. Now we've raised the pulse amps to about 100% and slowed down the pulse to about 0.5 Hertz. Notice how fast the puddle wets in. I am playing around somewhat with when to add the filler since the DC side of the pulse is so hot. At first, it is difficult to time, but with a little practice, you can train yourself to add on the quiet DC side of the pulse. Now here are the results of the weld testing. At the very top you can see where I set the DC pulse amps at 100% of the welding amps. It melted through at 150 amps on this 1 8 inch plate even without full pedal applied. Second from the bottom was where I was welding with DC pulse amps set at 25% of the welding amps. The other welds are where I varied the pulse amp setting somewhere between 25% and 100%. This concludes our four-part in-depth look at the PowerTig 255 EXT. If you have any questions about the 2015 version of the PowerTig 255 EXT or any Everlast product in general, give us a call at the number listed below.